223 Remington versus 308. We're talking some battle cartridges here on the Ammunition Guides podcast. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, today we're going to talk about the 223 versus the 308. Uh, obviously, this will boil down to whether you prefer Remington or Winchester. Yep. But I thought first off we'd discuss, you know, each of these rounds has a doppelganger with a much less charismatic name. The 223, of course, has the 556. The 308, of course, has the 76251. And uh, newer shooters might be scratching their heads and rubbing their bellies, wondering what the deal is with that. Well, the real trick is if you can do that at the same time. But uh, one thing that you can do at the same time is make sure you click that link down in the description. Get your $20 off coupon, no matter whether you like 223, 556, 762, or 308. Uh, we'll just get all those numbers jammed in there at once. Make sure you click that link down there. Get your coupon, and make sure you click that like and subscribe button while you're down there. But, Dave, you hit on a really, really important point uh, that uh, a lot of new shooters sometimes struggle with. And I know I had a, I have a best friend that I kind of got him into shooting, and we kind of had to have the talk about 223 and 556 and 762 and 308. And there's a lot of confusion over the NATO designations versus, uh, you know, the, the North American designations, the best way, or the SAMI designations, I guess is what we should call it. Uh, and if you missed it, make sure you check up. It'll be like right here in the cards. We just did a podcast on 223 versus 556 talking about that. But what it really comes down to, Dave, is uh, pressure differences uh, between the two rounds. That's really the big difference. Now, I know the 5.56 is loaded to a just high enough pressure over the 223 that they're not interchangeable. Yeah. But Sammy says, or at least they don't say it's dangerous to treat 308 and 760 251 interchangeably. That's true because the 762 is actually a lower pressure than the 308. Uh, the brass is slightly thicker on 762. Uh, cases and there's just a smidge less powder in there. So typically your your traditional 762 NATO uh, you know cartridges are going to be lower pressure than your standard you know, like 308 hunting rounds that you can get uh, pretty much in any sporting goods store around the nation. Now is it so that um, although 76251 is safe to fire in a 308 chamber, it may not necessarily function perfectly in all semi-autos due to very slight chamber dimension differences. I have heard of issues about that, and so I think uh, you should always test your ammunition, especially if you've got a semi-auto. Uh, if you have something specifically chambered in, you know, 7.62 or 308, always, if you can, you should fire what your gun is specifically chambered for, uh, especially in this case. Uh, but, you know, it's like some of those older actions and things like that, maybe even some of those bolt actions that are chambered in, uh, you know, 7.62 by 51 specifically, you need to be really careful shooting 308 out of it uh, because some of the new loads are pretty hot, uh, I'm not going to lie. And uh, you could cause pressure problems there. Now, I haven't heard about that. I think some of that might be anecdotal evidence, but it's always safer to always fire what's stamped on that barrel. Uh, so make sure you're doing that. Uh, but like you're talking about with slight variations in the chamber for semi-autos, there are slight variations between, you know, 7.62 chambers and 308. 99 times out of 100, you shouldn't have any issues, but you may. Uh, so just make sure you're testing your ammunition that you plan to carry if that's your thing. I don't think we've even compared the 223 to 308 yet. So, uh, I mean, the 223 VAR-15 round, Yeah. really manageable recoil for home defense. Forget about it. You're going to neutralize the threat. And I know its effective range is just a hair over 600 yards Yep. when yep. it comes to a human-sized target, like Absolutely. 604 yards maybe. Mm -hmm. Then the 308, I mean, that's used for deer hunting for darn good reason. Oh, yeah. And with that, you can plug it plug an immediate threat to your personal safety to use the preferred vernacular <laughs> uh, at a thousand yards which the layman has to realize is going to take a fair bit of ammo and practice and sandwiches to master 
Absolutely. No, it definitely, there's quite a range difference and recoil difference between these two, and it really kind of boils down to what you're looking to accomplish uh, with your cartridge. You know, that, uh, you know, that 223, fantastic out towards 600 yards, and actually has a better trajectory than the 308 out to 500 yards. It's actually a little bit flatter. But man, I tell you, once that 308 gets out there past that 500 yard range, uh, that sectional density that it has really kicks in and uh, it, it's considerably flatter than the 223 because the, the 223 is just losing uh, you know, too much velocity at that point. So uh, yeah, I mean, both cartridges are really good for uh, distance shooting. Of course, 308 is going to get you there further uh, and you know, get the job done at distance. Uh, and you hinted on the recoil as well, about five times difference in the recoil. Uh, 223 typically clocks in about four foot-pounds of, of free recoil, whereas the 308, we're talking like 20, 22 foot-pounds. So big difference as far as that's concerned. You were talking about the uh, 308's superior long-distance accuracy. Yeah. And I know it gets a lot more you know, energy behind the bullet, but you're also talking about a bullet that weighs three to four times more. Than the oh yeah. Twenty threes. I mean, the three hundred eight. We're talking about a lot more cartridge, really. At oh the yeah. End of the day, Definitely. Which you're going to pay a lot more for. You're going to need a more expensive rifle for. So not really worth investing in if you don't plan on on really getting into medium to long distance shooting. Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, you know, if you're a hunter, of course, uh, three hundred eight is where it's at. Uh, you know, 308, 30-06, those 30 caliber rounds really do the job on medium-sized game, things like that. So don't want you thinking that it's like, you know, you've got to shoot 500 yards or more to make a 308 viable. Uh, but if you're just looking for a plinking round or something like that to go out and do some high-volume shooting with, having some fun with, man, you can't mm -hmm. beat a 223 for that as far as the price point. It's about half the price of 308 for the most part, even in post-pandemic pricing modes. Uh, you know, it's considerably cheaper, but a lot of states don't allow 22 calibers for hunting, uh, and you need that larger caliber. Most require 243 or bigger, yeah. and the 308 definitely does a job on deer. And that's a shame because the 223 it doesn't get enough respect as a deer round. Within yeah. 100 to 150 yards, um, all you need is good shot placement and the right kind of bullet, you know, a TSX or an ELDX or something like that would do the trick. Oh, yeah. But, uh, for varmint, for varmint hunting, the 223 rocks. I mean, oh yeah. You don't even you don't even need an expanding bullet if you're just plugging yotes. Coyotes, woodchucks, prairie dogs. Though maybe for prairie dogs you want something a little bit longer range, like a 22 250. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean for varmint control on your property, for a lightweight you know carbine, you can't beat an AR-15 and 223. Uh, it just does the job on those thin-skinned varmints, and if you need something bigger, the 308's there to do the job. Yeah, but don't forget, if you ever seed your lawn and the crows come for a free buffet, <laughs> uh, pop, 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 before they even know it. Absolutely, and hog hunting as well. I know that that's getting more popular. Uh, you know, 223 can definitely do it. I think I'd prefer something a bit bigger if I got, you know, like a 400-pound boar charging at me, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. You know... But uh, if, you get, if you get it sidelong, you get that nice cervical vertebrae shot... Oh, it's over. Do it with pretty much anything. Definitely, definitely. Wouldn't use a 22 long rifle, but yeah, the 223 can do it. If you can spine that uh, that hog, it's not going anywhere. Could be done with a 22 LR. Wouldn't yeah, it recommend could. it. You want to get them on the first go. Now, you always got to say with a 22 LR, you got to point out that people have killed grizzly bears with mm -hmm. its weaker predecessor to 22 long, but uh, that, that famous incident, they, they were defending themselves against the bear. wasn't yeah. really their first choice. Yeah, for sure. It, just because you can do something with a cartridge doesn't mean that it's really the best choice to do it with that cartridge. Uh, I mean, most of the time with, the, with that, you're just going to tick the bear off. Uh, and that's not what I want to do, or a, a boar, depending on what you're coming down on. Uh, but yeah, always bring enough uh, you know, cartridge to, uh, to hunting if you need to. And of course, always follow your state and local regulations. Uh, if you're allowed to hunt with a, a 223, uh, I agree with you 100% there, Dave. Uh, within, you know, 150, round, uh, 150 yards, excuse me, you definitely have enough kinetic energy to ethically harvest that animal, uh, especially with the right loading. Yeah. But speaking of loadings, I mean, the 308 and 223 are so popular. Oh, yeah. I mean, these are the two American rounds mm -hmm. that you're going to find any kind of ammo you want for either, whether that's specialized SWAT team 
great <laughs> self-defense ammo, yeah. cheap, cheap, cheap FMJ ammo imported mm -hmm. from countries you couldn't find on the map, match-grade ammunition with, like, ELD match bullets. Oh, yeah. It's all there. Cheap mill surplus. Um, so you really don't have to paint yourself into a corner by picking either of these. You can get anything. And I think that's really the beauty of both of these cartridges is just the versatility that you get with both of them. The bullet weight range is so wide, you know, relatively speaking for each cartridge. I mean, you can have bullets as light as like 35 grains on a 223 up to about, you know, like 77 grains uh, match bullets uh, for your longer range shots. And, you know, on 308, you can go down to like 110 and all the way up to like 180. Uh, you know, even 200 with some specialty loads. So, I mean, it, yeah, you've got a lot. They load, they load a subsonic 308 with 200 yep. grade. Absolutely. So you've got so much versatility for whatever you want to do uh, with both of these cartridges. Like you said, you're not painted into a quarter at all. Uh, you've pretty much, the world is your oyster at this point, at least the shooting world, that is. We always got to point out, if you just want a self-defense rifle, um... I think the 223 is just hands down the way to go. It's going to keep your eardrums from getting blown inside out. Yep. Uh, it's got that recoil that you said five, what, what, 20% as much recoil as a 308? Uh, yeah, thereabouts. It's about a five time, five X difference between the two. So yeah, 20% of the recoil, which means your follow up shots are going to be faster. And, you know, with that smaller bullet, uh, you're not going to penetrate as much. Now, listen, you're probably going to over penetrate with the 223. Uh, especially in self-defense ranges, but uh, you know, for the most part, yeah, I would definitely take a 223 over a 308 for self-defense for the reasons that you mentioned, and also, uh, you know, just having that light, compact package. 308 rifles are pretty heavy typically, uh, and yeah. a 223 is going to be a lot easier to handle. Yeah, you need that much beefier action to absorb the energy, the definitely. pressure. I mean. Definitely. And uh, with that beefier action, sure, it's going to, you know, it's great for long range shooting. It's great for shooting off sandbags. But if we're talking about, you know, inside a home or in hallways or things like that, I'm going to take the lighter rifle. That's a lot easier to handle. Agreed. I don't think uh, I, I talked to some people who are just getting into it and they're all psyched to get the, the biggest cartridge they can get. Yeah. And they're unaware of muzzle rise or mm -hmm. muzzle flip. Oh, definitely. And, uh, yeah, you know, if you're very new to shooting, muzzle rise, uh, the more recoil, the more violently that round is going to jerk your barrel upward following mm -hmm. every trigger pull, you're going to need that much more time to restore your aim on target. And, uh, you know, if you manage to squeeze off one shot, you're going to make your intentions to the threat pretty clear, and you're going to give them a bigger window to retaliate, which you don't want. 223, just oh, yeah. right on target, each one. You miss by a little bit. You can adjust your aim. Uh, you don't have to scratch your head wondering why so many American homes have AR-15s just dedicated to keeping out bad guys. No, Dave, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, that time on target, getting back on quickly, especially in a self-defense situation, is so critical. And that's, you know, one of the main reasons why the military moved away from the 308 for the frontline cartridge as opposed to the 223 and then eventually the 556. Again, make sure you watch that video that we'll annotate here. Uh, but uh, definitely being able to keep that on target, that lower bullet weight, not pushing that barrel up so much, really helps you get those quick follow-up shots back on to you know be able to make sure that you put the target down uh and you know neutralize the threat that's that's the most important thing in a self-defense situation because you want to get out of that alive and uh if you have to pull that muzzle down every time you know it takes it takes time and in a self-defense situation, you don't want to have to, uh, you know, fight that recoil any more than you have to. Now, of course, you could always get a muzzle break uh, for your 308, but that's going to, we talk about uh, ear-shattering sound. Um, that mm. That's one right there. Try firing a muzzle break at an enclosed space. You'll see what uh, what the noise <laughs> from that 308 can do. It's going to rip all the posters off your wall. Pretty much. Uh, pretty much. I would not want to be in uh, behind that rifle, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, even with a suppressor, you'd still want to wear hearing protection. And that goes for any firearm except for a 22 LR, pretty much. So, uh, ain't no magic bullet to mix my metaphors. 
Definitely. Honestly, the only hearing safe round I'd feel comfortable cracking off indoors with the suppressor is going to be a subsonic 300 blackout. Uh, but yeah, guys, you got to remember, it's not like the movies. I know that we see James Bond, you know, whipping out his handgun and it sounds like guys, it does yeah. not, it does not sound like that with the suppressor, even oh on God. something like a two, two, three. I watched a, a John Wick movie. The oh other yeah. Day, and he's, he's having a gunfight with a guy in a crowded train station. Oh yeah. I remember that. Nobody, nobody knows. Oh, it's hilarious. And, you, you know, it's no fun to watch movies with gun guys because as soon as the guns come out, they're just going to start rattling off inaccuracies. Though the best part in that whole movie is when he's gun shopping because trust me, that that's just like a candy store for me. Oh yeah, and the guy's describing it like wine. Oh yeah, it was spectacular. I love that scene, but no, I know the scene you're talking about. That's the yeah. second movie, if I'm not mistaken. My, and, my yeah. girlfriend, she told me to shut up the other night. She finally <laughs> had enough. We were watching uh, Snatch. Okay. A guy, a guy is firing a 50 Action Express Desert Eagle. Yep. With with zero recoil. Mm hmm And of course, I, you know, covered in chip crumbs, start lecturing her on recoil for the 85th thousandth time. Oh, yeah, I do that. I'm just trying to watch. You're, you don't want to want it to watch this movie. Not I hear me. you. I hear you on that one. Hollywood has not done us any service when it comes to educating folks about suppressors and recoil and things like that. But, yeah, just understand that a suppressor will help cover the, uh, you know, the explosion part of the uh, the firing of the cartridge, but it will not cover the part where the bullet goes supersonic. So that supersonic crack that you hear when it breaks the sound barrier, suppressor can't handle that. So that's why... No cartridge is hearing safe unless it's subsonic and suppressed. So always make sure you're wearing your ear protection, guys. Hearing loss is permanent, can't be undone. So make sure you're doing that even when you have a suppressor. Yeah. Outside home defense, you still kind of want to hear what's going on with the dude. No, absolutely. Being Having your situational awareness in a self-defense situation is so incredibly important. Uh, and so, you know, the last thing you want to be is deaf. Uh, so, you know, that, that ear ringing that you have after you crack off that 308 indoors, it's, it's not going to help that hearing aspect. So being able to know what's going on, to be able to hear people around you, different things going on, because maybe you're having to deal with multiple attackers. Uh, that's something that can always come up and yeah. you want to be able to hear that. Now that said, if you're the Punisher or John Rambo and you can handle it, uh, oh, yeah. 308 is pretty much like snapping your fingers at close range as far as its stopping power what are we talking about like 2800 foot pounds of muscle energy you know it's funny you mentioned that day because i have the ballistics table up here for 308 uh it's a 165 grain hornady and yeah uh velocity is 2800 feet per second foot pounds energy 2955 uh so i mean yeah if you yeah. can if you can one arm that m60 and have the belt around your other arm and just, you know, cut it loose like John Rambo, then yeah, you're going to be just fine. But for the average person, such as myself, uh, not going to be able to handle that uh, in a self-defense situation. Uh, it's a bit much, honestly, guys. And, you know, I, my motto, of course, is like, you know, overkill's underrated, and I, I stand by that. But there comes a point when it's, it's just too much bullet for the job. Uh, yeah. It's like using a 50 BMG to take on a coyote, okay? Um, you know, Confucius says, don't use a cannon to kill a, mos a mosquito. So I, I, there is some truth to that. Uh, you know, use the right tool for the job and uh, know what that is. And I think self-defense, 223 all the way. So even a 223 delivers about four times the muzzle energy that uh, would be recommended for personal protection. So it's overkill by any reasonable standard. So the 308 does about 10 times the minimum energy recommended for self-defense. It's uh, way more icing on the cake than anyone's going to need. The guy oh, absolutely. breaking into your house isn't going to appreciate the difference. No, and you know only the coroner will be able to tell the difference, honestly. Uh, and the one thing that you don't want is to overpenetrate and then hit an innocent bystander or your neighbor next door or something like that. And that's something that you really need to take in mind when you're considering your self-defense options. It's why, you know, a lot of people prefer a handgun round for inside the house. Now, I know, every, here come the comments on the YouTube. I, I'm, I'm looking for them, guys. Go ahead and post them down there. Make sure you post those comments. But they'll be like, no, Chris, handguns are underpowered. You use your handgun to fight to your rifle. Okay, yeah, you do, except when your rifle's gonna punch through your sheet wall, or your sheet rock uh, in your apartment into your neighbor next door and, you know, hit their yeah. kid that's sleeping. That's the last thing you ever wanna do. Uh, so just make sure that you're taking your environment 
into account. Uh, always remember the cardinal rules of gun safety. Know what your backstop is. And if your backstop is your, your next door neighbor's apartment, you may want something a little less potent than one of these center fire rifle rounds. Well, we got to pay respect to the, uh, the Americans who realize the American dream and don't have neighbors. You True. guys, by all means, dig holes in your yards and fill them with tannerite. Or don't do that, but I wouldn't <laughs> stop you from doing that. I definitely wouldn't stop you from doing that. Of course not. Um, <clears throat> do it. Personally, I, I think a 12 gauge is, or 12 or a 20 is better for home defense than either a pistol or a rifle. But that's just me. Hey, I'm, I'm with you on that. There's nothing like some double out buckshot, uh, you know, which is a bunch of basically 32 caliber bullets coming out of that muzzle. Uh, so, yeah, again, like you said, it all depends on where you live and what your living situation is, which will determine what is best for self-defense for you. If you're out there in the boonies and your next door neighbor is your, you know, in the next county, then you want to rock that M1A, uh, you know, that, that SOCOM, that 16-inch M1A from Springfield, man, you do it, brother, and uh, ain't nobody gonna be coming back through that door. Uh, but if no, you live, it's not gonna be a door. That's true. The door will be gone. Uh, but uh, you know, if you live in the suburbs like me, or you live in the city, or you live in an apartment, be very, very careful with your decision. And like I said, both of these rounds may be a little bit too much for those situations. Yeah, yeah. Just use your kung fu. Absolutely. Well, there's that too. But uh, you know. Make sure you're getting your self-defense ammo here at ammo.com. I think that's the most important thing. And just, uh, you know, know what your round can do. Do your research. Uh, don't necessarily just take what we say here on YouTube. Make sure you're doing your research. And there's plenty of research out there uh, from the FBI. Their ballistics work is uh, very impressive. Yeah, you're going to want to do your research before you come to ammo.com because we got so many different manufacturers, 223 oh, yeah. and 308 in stock. I mean, we go to Eastern Europe. We go to uh, South America. We go to Western Europe. We go all over the place just to make sure we got tons and tons and tons of options definitely everything you need there on the website guys and uh you know regardless of whether you want 223 or 556 uh you know or 308 or 762 by 51 we've got it there for you make sure you get all of that get your coupon code down there in the comments dave let's let's close this up here what are your final thoughts on 223 and 308 well i think the 308 honestly unless you're going to be a deer hunter or a long distance shooter um not not a necessary investment if you were going to get one rifle and one rifle only great argument in favor to 223 uh the combat round but it's just intermediate combat round and and that's uh i think something every american should be able to to at least attempt at if the need ever arises um sharpen up your skills get better get a 308 and keep developing them but uh 223 all the way baby I have to kind of agree with you on this one, Dave, but I think for me, it's the cost basis that really kind of pushes me more towards 223. Your rifles are typically going to be less expensive. The ammo is going to be less expensive, which means more time at the range so that you can hone those marksmanship skills. So when the moment comes and you need to, you know, employ that rifle for either defense of yourself or defense of freedom, you are ready to rock and roll and you know what your rifle is going to do. As they say, always fear the man with one rifle because he knows what he's doing with it. So make sure you load up on your ammo here at ammo.com. Get out to the range and hone those skills and we'll see you on the next one.